quickly, I'll tell you about me. I've lived in Korea 28 years. How many of you have been here 8 years? So I, I, I've done a number of projects. I came originally to Pohang. In Postec, I built a particle accelerator. Uh, my, my background is actually in nuclear physics. Uh, internet has, and systems hacking have all been my hobby for about 40 years. I started in the mid-70s in this. I joined Daycom about, uh, about 23 years ago, built up a lot of the early broadband internet infrastructure in Korea. Uh, and more recently, I uh, sort of did some online shopping, built a company here called G Market, sold it to eBay 10 years ago, uh, and more recently involved in blockchain things. So uh, launched a new uh, mainnet last year called uh, EOS, and uh, so now building projects on top of that and other things. So I want to talk. I'm not talking about any product here. I have nothing to sell to, to you. I just want to talk about things that are interesting to me. So the first thing is, what's interesting? Why blockchain? Why is people think this is so great? And basically, blockchain has only two things that make it different from anything else. The first is that you have transparency. Everything that happens on a blockchain, everybody can see it. The second thing is immutability. Everything that happens on the blockchain can't be changed. These are really this, the, the things that make blockchain different from anything else. When everybody talks about private blockchain, to me it's always, I say nonsense, I think bullshit. Uh, the, a private blockchain is the same thing as a private database. Database is faster. It's really nonsense to build private blockchains. Maybe you can make some kind of consortium hybrid as possible, but nobody's built a good one yet. The, my personal interest, I want to build real projects that really do things. That's where the value will be created long term. I'm not interested about the investments and predictions and, and the, the, the gambling stuff. <coughs> Me personally, the things that the projects I'm focusing on are in, uh, especially in developing countries, to people who are unbanked. I want to bring them financial services using blockchain and mobile technologies, fintech technologies, to reduce what what's called the poor tax by economists. Poor people pay a huge fee for every type of financial transaction that they do. The, I want to build more security into the system so that they don't get taken advantage of. I want to remove middlemen who take fees for uh, very little added value. My targets are a few places. Uh, uh, it's Africa and a few large countries. So I, as I mentioned here, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, Turkey, Egypt, and Brazil. These are all countries with large populations, large number of smartphones, good mobile data networks, and a large percentage of unbanked. I'm building the test services for this in Cambodia right now. Uh, it's small enough to be able to try something adjust it, and uh, so once we get it working well there, we'll, we'll uh, uh, expand to other countries. The, my main focuses are payment, authentication of user, and reputation management. All of these are things which we get uh, uh, well out of blockchain technologies. Some individual projects that, that, that I'm working on. One is in Vietnam. We're working on a domestic coffee supply chain. 
uh, you probably know Vietnam has a huge coffee industry, the growers typically receive around 5% of the retail selling price of the coffee right now. It's, it's really horrible. The, 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 the coffee goes from the farmer to a, maybe a co-op, then a distributor, then a wholesaler, finally to a roaster, and then a retailer. All of these people in between take out value so that when the end customer pays for the coffee, what actually ends up in the farmer's pocket is typically less than 5%. So I'm working with the largest coffee retail company in Vietnam to build a system where we can do the domestic supply chain and our goal is to double the cash payments going to the farmers uh, within two years. In Africa, we're building so the first project I want to mention is I'm not I'm not so actively involved. I'm just helping them. Chama Pesa is a project in Kenya using blockchain to uh, create a small community-based uh, lending and payment system. Uh, worth looking into. Uh, it's very similar. The Chama is very similar to in Korea. We have the Ge, the community. Uh, saving system. Chama is a similar system in Kenya. We're, we're preparing to build an Africa-wide network based on the EO software, but it, it, as an independent network that is really targeted at how do we bring in 100 million retail end users in Africa. And, and we're working with Governments. We want governments to become the block producers or validators for this network so that they have uh, skin in the game and will we'll help to uh, build it out and then adjust their, their uh, legal systems to, to make this all work. I mentioned Cambodia before. Uh, 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 so far, crypto exchanges are illegal in Cambodia, so it's a pure fiat currency system, multi-currency, using the Cambodian real and US dollar. Uh, but we can do crypto for cross-border. There's about 20% of Cambodians who work overseas in other countries and remit money home, so the uh, cryptocurrency for that remittance is uh, 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 very useful. The Everything's localized, remittance is built into the system, and uh, 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 so that's a, a work in progress. <clears throat> I wanted to mention uh, uh, a project called the Community Alliance Network, or CAN. This is uh, actually being built in Korea. It's uh, intended to build reputation, to build certifications. And this is uh, uh, something we can do on the blockchain. It provides certainty, it provides trust. And with this type of environment, we can move it to many, many countries and people can understand who is the other party I'm dealing with? Why should I trust this person? And you can see a history of their behavior in other communities. This is a way to take your reputation from one community and use it in another community. The, uh, very, very attractive. Uh, a new one, we just launched a mainnet for this about three weeks ago, it's called Snacks. This is an idea to just, how do we make the utility of these tokens a lot easier for people to use, right? Uh, so Snacks, the idea is to, to get users on Twitter and Steam. These are the uh, uh, two services that work now. They're gonna add more. Uh, the usage pattern so far, it's very, very uh, uniformly spread out around the world. The, the Twitter users everywhere are using this. So, the challenges we have, right? we still need a lot of technology. You heard, on, on these uh, uh, wallet descriptions, there were a bunch of uh, 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 talk 
talk about new technology needed in these wallets and in these phones and so on. It's a start, but we're nowhere near what we need to deploy this at retail to real users in, in, in developing countries. Everything, in my view now, is, should be focused on smartphones. You know, when I go to any of those countries I mentioned, people have smartphones. You know, in Africa now, I can get a $50 smartphone that does all of this stuff. Nobody has PCs. You know, the idea of you know, doing stuff with a browser plug-in in your wallet, in your PC, no, never gonna happen in those places. It all has to be done on the smartphone. The problem is, smartphone apps are horribly bad at security. Uh, there was a study came out about three weeks ago that looked at fintech and, and banking apps from the uh, App Store and Google Play Store. 97% of them were hacked to get the user secrets within about 10 minutes. These things are, everybody who develops you know, smartphone apps using Java or uh, Swift or standard programming languages, they're horrible security programmers and they're almost always trivially hacked. Every smart banking, every uh, mobile banking app in Korea can be hacked within 30 minutes and I can get all your secrets. It's, uh, yeah, if you're using mobile banking, you're a little bit foolish. The, we need better storage systems. There's a lot of data we're generating with this blockchain stuff. We need ways to store it, ways to access it. My final point is security, security, security. Everybody looks at features, nobody cares about security. You always, on these projects, you always need to look underneath and find out what is the real security architecture. Is it designed in from the beginning? If it's not designed in from the beginning, it's always going to be bad if you try and add it on and fix the problems later. Thank you.